Getting a job right now feels impossible and chances are if you're watching this video, you're feeling the same way. Today I'll talk about what's really going on in the economy, my experience looking for a job since my layoff, and my predictions on when things will possibly get better. Now to set some context on what's going on, I want to dive into three possible reasons why it's so hard to get a job. And the number one reason why it's so hard to find a job right now is that employers are more focused on actions like cost cutting than hiring at the moment. And this is due to high inflation, which in turn is raising the interest rates by the feds in order to try and slow down the economy. And for much of 2023, companies felt like the recession was just around the corner and pulled back on the hiring as a result but those fears aren't gone yet. And normally economists will predict a tough market two or three quarters ahead. And there's usually a light at the end of the tunnel, but this time it's been almost 24 months of predicting that recession is just coming very, very soon. So that uncertainty is causing companies to pause hiring and, and actually actively lay off their workforce to cut costs, which not only decrease the number of roles in the market, but also increases competition and the number of people actively looking for a job. And I was talking to a friend recently and he told me that when he was hiring just a few years ago, he had posted a job, ended up getting maybe around six applicants, and he ended up interviewing just one of them, and he ultimately hired the same person. But now he's hearing that whenever you post a job, you get a few hundred people applying for that role in the first day or two. And traditional white collar jobs are getting impacted the most. And software development jobs postings are down 44% from a year ago, while job postings for banking and finance are also down 31%. And due to companies hiring for less roles, this also means that no one's really quitting at the moment for a better role, which further stops any type of movements in the job market. And the second reason why it feels impossible to get a job right now is that companies are really, really slow at hiring at the moment because they're being more strategic with their limited headcount. So they're spending more time looking for a best person to hire because they simply don't want to spend the time and resources to train them and they'd rather hire someone who could get the job done from day one. And the third reason why this job market sucks is that job applicants are getting ghosted by companies and mentions of recruiters ghosting job applicants have more than doubled since last year. And the reason why this might be happening is that when companies are laying off their workers, the first place they usually cut is their HR department due to the hiring freeze, which means that there are less and fewer people managing their job posts, responding to their job applications, which further increases the confusion and frustration in the job market. And all of this is leading to a widespread burnout for job applicants. And a recent survey states that around 55% of unemployed adults are burnt out from searching for a new job. And then younger generations are affected the most with 66% of them experiencing a burnout stem from job search. And personally for me, it's been a tough process of looking for a job because I was laid off around six months ago. And I think the biggest frustration is just the lack of interviews and callbacks from hiring companies which is far less than what I've gotten in the past at least. And in my last video, I talked about switching up my strategies by using my connections and networks to try and get referrals to land interviews instead of just applying as a cold applicant. And over the last month, I've gotten around five referrals, applied to around three positions per referral. And I'll give you five seconds to guess what your answer is on how many interviews you think I've gotten from those 15 positions that I was referred to. Yeah, I got a nice fat zero interviews from my referrals. And I thought I could have gotten maybe around 50% success rate of lending the interview before. And even if I got one interview, that would have been a 7% success rate, but I got nothing. Some people I spoke to mentioned that this might be due to companies hiring internally instead. And they actually could have known who they wanted to hire before they really posted the job, but they still legally have to post these jobs in order to make things fair. But it's just frustrating for me because I'm getting rejections and I feel like I'm wasting my referrals on jobs that aren't really even open to the public. A month ago, I was a bit hopeful that I could at least get an interview and possibly get a job in the next couple months, but that's obviously not the case. So this job market is definitely frustrating for me. So if you're in a similar boat, I don't want you to feel like you're alone in this experience and in the frustration that you might feel from this job market. And just take a pause, Make sure you like and subscribe if you are enjoying and getting value from this video. This really supports the channel and I can keep you guys posted on any updates that I get from my job search. And as a side bonus, I also like talking about personal finance in some of my videos. Now, in terms of the predictions on when the job market will get better, I would say this will happen when employers start to feel more confident about the economy and want to start expanding their teams. But for that to happen, interest rates needs to come down. And for the interest rates to also come down, inflation needs to be closer to 2%. So until then, companies will be at this wait and see period. And there's still uncertainty on when the feds will most likely cut interest rates. And it seems like there's a 
big toss up on the cuts happening either in the second half of 2024 or maybe not until Q1 of 2025. And the latest March 2024 report shows that inflation is still at 3.5%, which is above the desired 2% inflation rate. And if you look at this chart, it hasn't gone even below or around 2% since February of 2021, which is more than three years ago now. And as a background, Fed's lowered interest rates to nearly 0% to combat the 2020 recession from COVID-19. But that caused inflation to run rapid from companies borrowing money and increasing their headcount, workers getting their salary raises, and therefore increasing consumer demand. And there's also research showing that majority of inflation is actually caused by corporate greed because corporations are increasing their prices and then blaming it on supply chain issues and COVID. But that's not the scope of this video, so I won't go into too much into that. So in 2021, inflation started to get out of hand and to, again, fight this high inflation, Federal Reserve raised federal funds target rate 11 times between March 2022 and July 2023. And at the most recent meeting in March, the Fed decided to keep the federal funds target rate at 5.25 to 5.5%, which has remained there since almost a year ago, since July of 2023. And the Fed did predicted that there will be three quarter percentage cuts throughout 2024 if the market allows it. And normally FOMC meets eight times a year to discuss whether to adjust the federal funds rate. And they're set to meet five more times this year. And interest rates increases have bled into other financial markets where mortgage rates has gone up significantly. Even the average credit card interest rate has gone from 16.3% in March 2022 to nearly 21% now. And what also doesn't look good right now is that the Labor Department for Non-Farm Payrolls report showed a strong gain of over 300,000 jobs last month, which means that a strong job market raises the potential of even higher inflation meaning that the central bank might not even want to ease policies at the moment. So we'll see how things really play out this year. And I do want to say a few words of encouragement for anyone looking for a job right now, because all of the rejections in your inbox are less to do with you and more to do with what's going on in the economy right now. And I think the hard part is that we understand that this is a tough job market, but when you get rejected over and over again, I think it's really easy to start questioning ourselves a little bit and ask whether we're the problems here. And I think it's really good to mention that there are limited jobs out there with a very highly competitive talent pool. So I can only imagine how hard it is for new graduates, whether you're coming out of high school, college, or even grad school, and even tough for those coming out of boot camps or those in the middle of a career transition. But I fully assure you that this is a current job market and this is just the state of the economy right now. So a word to the wise and a good reminder for myself is to focus on what you can control. So number one, try to continue networking through LinkedIn with your former colleagues. Number two, stay positive and persistent because job searches can be really challenging and discouraging. So try to celebrate the small victories that come along the way. And if you can, try to seek out the support from your family and friends because I think it's really helpful for me to be able to talk to others about my situations like that. And number four, pursue some hobbies and activities that bring you excitement and relaxations why are you looking out for a job? So other than that, I wish you guys the best of luck. Let me know in the comments if you're looking for a job right now and what your experiences have been like. And I really hope that all of us will find something great soon. And I'll see you guys in the next one.